Within this video, we're gonna walk through how you can actually fire events inside the sequencer. In this case, what we're gonna do is actually fire off a visual effect here inside of the Robotown. So to get an idea of what this is actually gonna look like, I'm just gonna come up here and click on the play button so you have an idea of what we're going for. And once we get to frame 200-ish, you'll actually see the confetti fire. There you go. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this. Before we begin this, I do want to preface a couple of things. One, I'm using the Unreal Engine Learning Kit, so you can go ahead and find this on the Marketplace. It's free. You can go ahead and open it up and play with it. The other thing that I'm going to assume is that you probably already have a video sequence and a camera up and running. We're not going to be covering that in this tutorial. We're only going to be covering how to add events to the sequencer. Once you have the Unreal Learning Kit open, there's a little bit of setup that we need to address. First and foremost, we want to make sure that we're in the correct level. So down here in the content drawer, what we want to do is migrate to the Unreal Learning Kit Robots section. And inside of there, you'll find a section that says Maps Robots. We'll go ahead and open up that one. Specifically, what we're looking for is this Maps Robotown. So let's just double click on that to open up our level. With the Robotown now open, you will notice that everything up here is grayed out, and that's by design. We can't actually click on anything inside of here, so we need to unlock the level before we can actually start to play with the sequencer that's actually built in here. So to do that, we're just going to come up here into Window, come down here into Levels, and you'll get this floating window, and all you need to do is just unlock this first persistent level. So just click on that, and we go ahead and just close this. Next, we need to actually access the sequence that we have inside of here, and that can be found right here, this camera fly-through. Now, I'm going to assume that you already have a sequence inside your level. However, if you don't, you can actually add one very easily just by coming up here to this little clipper up here and click on that and just say Add Level Sequence, and you will then get one of these. So I'm going to just select this, and you can see it is here inside of my level, just hiding out hidden. And what I want to do is go ahead and just open the level sequence. So this button right here, I'm going to click on that. And this is the level sequence we're going to be working with. To see the actual animation fly through, we need to do one thing inside the level blueprint. So a little bit more setup. So hang in there. We're getting there. Up here in the top left, we'll find a little spot where we can list all of our blueprints. I'll go ahead and open that up. Go ahead and choose our open level blueprint. And within here, what we want to do is connect our event begin play to this play node. All you got to do, the sequence is already built inside of this project. So now that this connected, I'm going to compile come back to my Robotown, and when I press the play button up here, we'll actually see this begin to play. Now, I'm not gonna play through the entire fly through, but you can see that, hey, this is exactly what we saw at the beginning of the video. I'm gonna press escape and jump out of this, and I'm gonna press five on the keyboard so I can zoom back up here. Next, let's go ahead and choose a point within the timeline we want our confetti to fire. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is figure out where the camera is actually going. So I can actually select my camera actor right up here in the top right, and I can see this line you follow it right along here where this camera is actually going to be going. And you'll also notice that we get a preview down here in the bottom right of our window. I'm going to go ahead and click on this little button right here. It's going to pin it to my screen so it doesn't go away. So as I actually fly in here, and if I select anything else, that thing won't disappear in the bottom right hand corner. So if I select something else, yay, this thing still stays here. Let's make sure that we do actually have our camera selected. And if I scrub through my timeline down here at the bottom, you can actually see where that camera is going to be. And on the right, you can actually see what that camera is going to see. So at this point, somewhere around the 200 frame mark, let's say right about here-ish, I want that confetti to go ahead and fire. So set my time first, and then we can go ahead and set our keyframe. Now let's go ahead and bring in the confetti that we're going to have fire on screen. So to do that, we're going to go down to our content drawer down here at the bottom. And at the very bottom of this, you'll notice that there is a little folder that says VFX. Instead of there, there's bursts. Specifically, I'm going to go ahead and use this winning confetti. So I'll just click and drag this in. And for me, I want it to be pretty much right on top of this little orange barrel. Um, I'm actually going to push it in a little bit just to prove a point. You can see it fire as soon as I let go. I'm going to lift it up. Now, Here's the thing that we need to be very aware of, that over here in the far bottom right-hand corner with this thing selected, you'll find a little button that says Auto Activate. I want to toggle this off because I don't want it to fire immediately when the game begins. I'm actually going to activate it with the event. So I'm going to turn this off for now so that it doesn't fire as soon as the game plays. Our next step is to actually add the confetti to the sequencer so that we can fire it. So with the confetti selected, you will notice that you will see it up here inside the outliner. All I need to do is go ahead and just click and drag this into a blank area down here inside of the sequencer and then let go. And then to add the event track, make sure that it is selected and go ahead and choose this track button right here. And specifically what I'm looking for is an event and I'm going to choose trigger. So to actually add a point where we want this to be 
fired, we want to make sure that A, we are at the correct frame. And then with this one selected down here, we can just click on this tiny little button, or we can actually press the enter key on the keyboard and it'll actually add in a little keyframe. So there's one right there. Now this tiny little keyframe that I've added, this one that's right here, we just need to go ahead and right click on this to go ahead and go up to properties and come over and down to where it says unbound. Click on that and go ahead and say create new endpoint. This is going to create the event within the sequencer that is going to fire off the confetti. So we'll just click on this and we'll get a whole new window. And just to make a point, if we look at this and check out the name and we go back to our Robotown, which we can do through the tab up here in the top left, you will see that this name down here is exactly the same. So let's go back to our fly through right here up at the top. And what we want to do is go ahead and pull a pin off of this NS winning confetti, pull and drag and type in the word toggle. And what we're looking for is this toggle active. So we can just click on that. And then we can go ahead and just connect all of these like so. Now all we need to do is go ahead and compile, save, and now we can go back to our Robotown and test this and see if it's going to work. So we'll just come up here and hit the play button and our level should go ahead and start. The video will begin and at about frame 200, we should see that confetti. Ta-da, there it is. I'll press escape. Now, before we end this, I wanna throw in a few little pro tips. So here's our first one. Now I'm back here inside of the level sequence director. We were actually writing this code and you see that I have a custom event down here that I've just created. What we can do is we can actually kind of change the way that these are bound within the sequencer. So let's go back over to the sequencer. And if I right click on this keyframe down here, go up to properties, come all the way down here to event. I can go ahead and click on this and say rebind to, and you can see I can get access to that other event that I've actually created in there. Now, the other pro tip that I wanna throw in this is that you can actually see these fire in the editor without having to watch the entire video. So what I'm gonna do is just, again, right click on this, come up here to properties, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose call in editor and click on that. Now I'm gonna to have to back my camera up just a little bit so that we can actually see this happen. Now, if I go ahead and use my scrubber and I scrub over that point, you can actually see this fire. So there you have it. Now you know how to go ahead and fire events within the sequencer to get things to happen when you need them within your cinematic sequences. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go ahead and just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you when I can.